want us to bribe Michael Reed into pleading guilty? I have no intention of taking the stand again. One million, paid out over 10 years to be divided equally among Nathan Robinson's heirs. Your company has annual revenues of $400 million. We have to draw a line, Mr. Cutter. Otherwise, we'll be fighting off lawsuits left and right. Or you may be fighting off a jail sentence. Eddie Robinson, Nathan's son, in a group home with cerebral palsy. He lives in my jurisdiction. Read the definition of assault. It includes taking blood without consent. There's a statute of limitations. Not for a concealed crime against an incompetent victim. This mother and the two daughters are all actresses hired by us. One daughter intentionally cast to look nothing like the mother. Experts say many factors, including appearance, can trigger favoritism. Your hair's different, your body's different. This unsuspecting shopper quickly takes notice. She's got the looks. She's more like me. I wear dresses, she wears dresses, and you don't like to wear dresses, okay? I asked you to leave nicely. I'm gonna have to take the dog. No, no, you do not take my dog. I'll walk him out of here. No, you do I not. Will I will walk him out of here. I have every right to have this dog, sir. You can't have the dog. It's the law. No, it's the I'll law. I'll take the dog out. Do you want me to call the police? Yes, you can call the police because I have a right to have this dog We don't here. want this dog in here, okay. sir. It's okay. For Sam, you may be small, but we know that won't last long. Someday you'll have big plans and big dreams. And we want you to know you'll always be taken care of. Love, Mom and Dad. The Radio City Christmas Spectacular National Tour, coming to an arena near you. Welcome to the making of a spectacular. A show that's timeless, ageless, and bigger than any production traveling on the road today. The Radio City Christmas Spectacular. Families across generations make it a cornerstone of their Christmas season celebrations. It's time to switch things up. Now the antagonist is this overbearing mother pushing her taste for provocative clothing on her conservative daughter. I'm telling you, you're not going to get a boy come this way. You've got the good time. Come out. We meet Leslie Geary, a former TV reporter with plenty of her own stories to tell. I saw this. These two little guys come take something off your purse and stick it in your purse. Do I look like I need to steal a wallet? No, absolutely not. If you didn't take anything, you have nothing to worry about. But perhaps it's in your purse. Lorraine marches off to find the manager. Please don't tell him. Don't say anything, please. Really? Why did you do that? Do you need help? Maybe I can help you. I really, I have dedicated my life to try to help you. Help me out. I don't know. You seem like a really nice woman. I get it. I know you're in trouble, or sad, or scared, or in some bad place. I just need a friend. Do you want my phone number? Do you want to talk sometime? I'll take your phone number. You can just call. Just say, hey, I need help. I just need a friend. I need just somebody to talk to. I'm going through hell. There's a baby in a car on Church Street uh, in, a, in a red Volvo, and it's unattended. Is there a problem? Yeah, we just called the police. Is this your kid? Yes. Is she awake? No. But how do you leave a baby in the car like that? Locked and no, it's She's locked? completely fine. How do you know she's completely fine? We've been standing out here for five minutes. Anybody could have opened that car and taken that baby. I am irresponsible. Another woman joins in, and the three strangers won't let the mother off the hook. Why don't you mind your own business? I don't, I don't know I if this will. has anything to do with you. Well, of course it does. I I'm a citizen. I see that? a baby trapped in a car. Have you not been reading the press about kids that die in trapped cars in the summer? That she's fine. I know she's fine. I've, I've done it before. Well, that well, that's very not scary. Really. That's Somebody, scary. you shouldn't have that baby. You should. That's just totally reckless. irresponsible. That is reckless. Well, God bless you, child. I hope you make it. And our actress is about to make them even angrier right, as fine. she leaves the baby once again. And she then just she leaves just the baby unattended. Again. Totally unattended. Where are the cops? I don't know. But instead of the cops, we show up. 
How are you? I'm John Quinones, and this is part of an experiment we're doing on what you should do when you see a baby in a car like that. And That's you spoke horrible. That That's involved. horrible. We it's not a real baby. Oh, you know? I looked closely. <laughs> and over here, she's an actress. She, <laughs> <laughs> she didn't mean to upset you. <laughs> but we told uh, her to. Oh, and then when you walked away, it was like. How did you feel? Like I could kill her, really. We rigged these cameras inside the store to capture these women, all actors we hired. I had $50 on my car. Along with the cashier, she's part of our team, too. You don't have enough on there. Take off the baby. Okay. There's no way. I have no money on my car. Can we put this back? OK. At the cash register, our first actor tries to check out. This has never happened before. How much does she need? 16. In only a matter of minutes, no, please. Thank you. Thank you. help from Thank not you just one, but two generous strangers. Wait, this back on. Oh, that's okay. You'll pay for the baby food. <laughs> minutes later, when our actor's food stamp card is denied again, that's all right. Give it to her. Give it to her. Okay. Thank you very much. It seems like everyone in this small town store wants to help until our actor steps into that checkout line Sorry. one more time. It's right. never happened to me before. <laughs> this man listens, appearing sympathetic no, no. to our actor in distress. I don't have any cash. But then, out of nowhere, watch this man. He counts just enough money to cover his own groceries. And then That's he offers the rest to Thank our you. actor. I'm so embarrassed. I would do it if I had more cash. I understand. I'm lucky to have a job still, so. We set up our hidden cameras inside the Mastoris Diner, a popular restaurant in Bordentown, New Jersey. We've hired two actresses to play longtime friends, friends on a collision course on this road to adoption. She's my daughter. The woman on the right of the screen plays a newly adoptive mother of a child who, well, looks nothing like her. And we're about to find out what her good friend thinks about that. You should have a child that looks like you. This adorable adopted girl is, of course, an actress we've hired. She understands that the harsh words she may hear are only make-believe. As our scenario begins, it doesn't take long before the antagonist starts expressing her narrow-minded views. Hi! Oh, that's Nairi. Her? Nairi, this is Tracy. Hi. My friend. She's black. <laughs> I thought she was going to be white. Oh, uh, yes. She's black. <laughs> Look, I'm a good friend. I'm just, if you don't hear it from me, you're going to hear it from somebody. And I'm just trying to tell you now that you adopting a black girl, a little black child, is going to be problems for your life. You couldn't have just waited for a white child. Tracy, I'm not going to return her like she's she's what a garment I don't want. Well, why did you pick her out to begin with? This patron, a regular at the diner, has heard enough, and she leaves her conversation at the counter to give our bickering women an earful. The child is old enough to know what's going on between the two of you. And you really should let what's going on between the two of you happen when she's not with you. When we run the scene again, our angry actress storms off in a huff. Tell me what she needs, Tracy. Well, I don't know, because I'm white and she's black. How about that? You shouldn't have adopted a black girl. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm so upset right I'm now. I'm embarrassed. Oh. That's when Lorraine Coriel rises to the occasion. She opens her heart to our distressed <laughs> new mother. My granddaughter came home to me and said she was pregnant. But I went nuts. I want to be part of this child. I get the honor. And that child is the reason you breathe in the morning. Sure, of course. I can only tell you the joy that child brings. 